Yeah. Hey guys, it's she. I'm back. Oh wait, it's wait. You can't even see me. Hey guys, it's she. I'm back today with another video. So today I'm at my client's wig store. Got a lot of stuff going on in here. It doesn't look like it's gonna open in a week, does it? I know. Have a lot of work to do. So as you can see over here, this is the mural. Um, we commissioned our artist to paint a mural. It has pink and blue, so it's gonna have clouds and a pretty lady with a nice wig in the corner. <clears throat> And I won't spoil the rest for you guys, but today we're gonna be working on this hideous, ugly monstrosity, this couch. And, but this thing was so god awfully heavy. But it's gonna be fabulous when we finish with it, guys. Stay tuned for the rest of the video. I'm gonna show you how you can paint furniture. Yes, you can paint furniture. And once we paint it, the texture is gonna feel like leather, so. Don't worry about reupholstering. All you gotta do is get some chalk paint. And anyway, let's get right into this video. So guys, since I'm in my client's shop, I definitely wanted to make sure that I protected their brand new floors and also their freshly painted walls. So I'm just taking some um, plastic. I got this from Lowe's. And I'm taping it to the walls and floors. That way, when I'm using my spray paint and also my chalk paint, I don't damage any of the client's surfaces. Taping things off can be a little bit tedious, but cleaning paint off of walls and floors is worse. So definitely don't skip this space, especially if you're deciding to paint a large piece like this indoors. Guys, first what I'm gonna be doing is making this chalk paint. And I need to make a lot of chalk paint because it requires, this couch is huge and it's gonna require a lot of paint. So I guess what I'm gonna do is First, I got this bucket from Lowe's. Big bucket. I'm gonna go get some shoes on my feet, first of all. It's, uh, see, look, look how neat the artist is. <laughs> I was like, I need to get like him, because he's like been extra neat throughout this process. Of course, it's cold. Let's see. Of course, that's colder. Ideally, guys, you would definitely want to use hot water. The hot water helps to uh, dissolve the chalk powder a lot better. So the hotter the water, the better. But unfortunately, the water at the shop was cold. So that just means that if you use cold water, you have to stare more. But I'm going to show you guys today, like, kind of how I make chalk paint. And I say kind of because every time it's different. Which y'all might think that's bad, but whatever. So, this is my chalk dust. I get it from Amazon. And what we're gonna do is pour it in here. So guys, the chalk powder itself has a recipe on the front of the bag. If you decide to order it, you can get it from my Amazon store. You can click the link down in the description to buy it. I personally don't follow the directions because I've made this like a thousand times. So at this point, I kinda just know how to do it. So that's my recommendation for you. Or you can also watch other YouTubers who make their own chalk paint. They're probably a little bit more precise. Me, I'm not. <laughs> I kind of just freestyle it because I've done it so much. It's like second nature. And also, the recipe will vary depending on how much you want to make, what color you're using, etc. But the only ingredients you will need each time is the chalk powder, hot water, and then your choice of paint. The more chalk, the better. And I always like make a small amount of chalk. So usually I know like exactly how much to pour. I think just from repetition. But yeah, you want to mix it. And you normally, you typically want to mix it with hot water so that it can dissolve and doesn't clump. But next, what we're going to do is open up our paint. The paint I got is this Valspar Express Coat. Um, this is like one of the cheaper paints that Lowe's offers. And now we're just gonna pour. That's why I actually have this inside of the box. Yes, guys, like I really just poured this whole gallon in there like that. 
See what I'm talking about? The mess. So messy. Now we're gonna stir this. So I'm gonna stir this until I don't see any more white streaks and then I'm gonna come back. Okay guys, so we're gonna be taking this Rust-Oleum Metallic Gold spray paint. It's my favorite spray paint. We're gonna shake it, shake it. So the Rustonia Metallic Bright is my absolute favorite because it really gives a beautiful true gold finish that doesn't fade over time. And if you aren't good at spray painting or you typically get runny spray paint, there's a few things that you need to do. One, don't keep trying to cover the entire area in one coat. Most of the time when you spray paint, you will have to go back and do a second coat and that was definitely the case for all of the trim on this sofa. Otherwise, you will get runs if you don't give it a rest and then come back and apply a second coat to the spots that you may have missed. And secondly, they sell a spray paint attachment. It, it will make the can of spray paint perform like a spray gun. So you get a more even and consistent coat and it only costs about $10. It's linked on my Amazon link in the description box. Okay guys, so now we're moving on to the actual painting. So I took my bucket of chalk paint and I placed it on the sofa. And right now I'm just slathering on the paint. Um, I think this would have worked a lot better if I would have used a brush that had a round tip. That way I would have been able to get into the little tufting holes a lot easier. So that's the one tip that I definitely recommend. When you're painting fabric, fabric is super absorbent. So what you'll notice is that the fabric literally acts like a sponge and it starts to soak up the paint but also guys each fabric is going to absorb paint differently so it's always a good idea to test a spot that's not as noticeable before you commit to painting the entire piece um i didn't do that so i had to play around with the water to paint ratio just a few times until i was able to reach a good consistency and also until I was really satisfied with the coverage that I was getting. One thing that I learned as well is that paint has a tendency to crack if it's applied too thick and it may also flake over time. So you definitely want to use thin coats at first. Oh my God guys, so this fabric has like a slight texture. So you want to make sure you paint in the same direction and you want to definitely work quickly to avoid any brush strokes. And I know the irony is that you're watching me paint this and I'm painting in all different directions. But as you can see, I'm going back and kind of painting everything in the same direction because you don't want to accidentally have brush strokes and then it looks crazy when it dries, you know? So the other tip I want to let you guys know is that if you have a chair with darker upholstery or a really bright obnoxious pattern, you will most likely need to choose a darker color paint or apply more paint coats to get the coverage that you need. Because my sofa was white, I didn't have to worry about it at all. Okay guys, so this is the couch 24 hours later. I had to allow it to dry for 24 hours before going back in with a second coat. So what I did to seal the paint was actually just use a blow dryer to allow the fabric to heat up really hot and it seals the paint. I apologize for not having footage of that. I was just busy trying to renovate the shop completely. So there were some steps that I just did not have time to record. Alright guys, so here is the final look. This is how the couch turned out. I know some of you are wondering, the pillows came from Hobby Lobby and then I found this little cute guy at the thrift store for six bucks. So yeah, that is the sofa. 
still have a little bit of touch up to do, but I wanted to go ahead and show you guys what it looked like so that way I could finish editing this video. Um, and then this is the rest of the, the wig shop so far. So thank you guys for watching this video. Um, some of you are probably wondering what the fabric feels like. And the fabric is actually really, really soft. And I think that's because I put the extra water into my paint mixture. I have painted pieces before where the fabric turned out like a leather and it cracked. But I think the key is just using a lot of water and applying multiple coats. Experimentation and testing is key. Um, definitely start with a smaller piece. <laughs> I would have never even attempted this huge piece for my client had I not tried other chairs previously. Painting fabric is definitely a quick fix method for a piece of furniture that has potential but you don't want to spend a ton of money on it reupholstering it. The painting goes really really fast so it's just a quick project that's easy to pull off. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you decide to paint a piece, definitely share it with me over on Instagram at Cozy Interiors by She or at Miss Fashion Relate. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.